and hello YouTube welcome back to this uh, open form slash salon tutorial so in the last video we talked went through the basic outline of workflow of going from FreeCAD to Salo and to open form okay so we actually exported uh, a mesh the other time but it was a 2d mesh so these were the steps that were taken I actually uh, created a mesh from this pad 003 and I use this body fitting algorithm using a snap uh, hexahedral mesh. And I uh, give this uh, automatic hypothesis, but all of them are 2D somehow. So I'll just click OK and uh, apply, press apply, then I compute this mesh. Okay, so apparently this mesh works, there's no error. However, do note uh, I mean, this is the correct shape, but this is a 2D mesh. So what I did after that was to export. Export this to a UNV file. UNV file I put under heatexchanger.unv. I save it. I override it. Then um, what I do, since it's in my Salome directory, I'm going to my Salome work directory. I'm doing this very fast. Uh, I copy this UNV file over that I just exported. And I'm going into my open form directory uh, so it will be inside all these cases i made a case called heat exchanger salon and this is the, another umv file i was playing with i'll delete this but i'll just paste this here okay you see the zero original constant system they're all here and i can just paste this uh, heat exchanger umv file here all right so this will be in your uh, running directory whatever does not have to be there you can put it in your tri surface file uh, in under your constant but then uh, of course doing this doing this I mean I have a here exchanger.unv here I mean I can delete uh, but I mean your workflow will more or less be the same so let me cut this and I'm going to put this into my tri surface directory of course I'm using the GUI the graphical user interface cause uh, doing this through command line will be kind of a bit slower so since I'm on Linux why not uh, do things a little faster uh, by doing that of course you can use your CP commands and you do the same uh, change directory ls everything I'm skipping those bits I assume you know how to do it okay I mean if you're here by now you should be knowing all these things all right anyway so I have I'm in this here exchange just salome file and I can go ls constant try surface and I see that my uh, UMV file is there so how do I use the ideas to UMV form so I just type ideas UMV to form inside the main directory where you usually like well run block mesh pinball form whatever you have ideas UMV dot form then you need to specify the UMV file so that will be in constant uh, try surface uh, heat exchanger UMV okay so this is how the output will look like all right so this is the open foam uh, open foam thing it will mesh 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 and it will give you a warning here okay so it says here there are no cells in the mesh and it says note 2d meshes are not supported so this mesh is 2d it is not a finished mesh so um, you just have to be very careful what's going on in your salon. Okay, so let's let's try and make a 3D mesh. Let's try and make a 3D mesh. Okay, I was going through the rest of the steps very fast. But basically you you um you export your the, the idea is you export your mesh as a UMV file, bring it over to your open form directory, and use these ideas to UMV form. Right, this ideas, ideas to UMV form over here to convert that into a poly mesh file. That's your basic steps. Th these are your basic steps. All right, so that's that's how you work with Salome. All right. Unfortunately, uh, the 3D mesh was a little bit problematic to generate. So let's let's try let's try generating it. 
But of course, this is e uh, this is much easier than the snapping X mesh block mesh way because you can't see what's going on as easily as you do here. So let's do uh, under your mesh workbench. You go and click pad 003 or whatever mesh you have. Click create mesh, and you try and do your tetrahedral again. So I'm going to do body fitting, apply automatic set hypotheses, and I'm going to do this uh, hypothesis construction length of whatever. I'm going to press apply. Okay, so this will try to make a tetrahedral mesh. So it's going to try and make that, and it's going to give me an error. It says invalid input mesh, ng exception at volume. Uh, meshing stop meshing since boundary mesh is overla overlapping, overlapping, intersecting triangles. So how do you see this? Uh, oh shucks, I should not have done that. Let, let me let, let's do this again. All right, I'm gonna delete. Uh, I'm gonna recreate the mesh. Uh, all right. Um, quickly go to body fitting and tet. Oops, cancel. Tetrahedralization. Click OK and uh, press apply. All right, and I'll press compute here. Okay, it's gonna give this uh give this uh thing. I can show the bad mesh. All right, it uh let's see. You can't see it very well. So show the sharp uh, sub shape, and that's not that's basically gonna tell you everything, but uh not not helpful. Okay, let's try again. Compute and bad mesh to group okay so now you see this uh, bad mesh of pet 003 what's it tell you well uh, it will tell you where this mesh has so called gone wrong okay you can right click and you go to uh, click show only show only will delete everything else uh, but this uh, group of bad meshes as you can see this these triangles here are sort of overlapping you can see the the lines are going through this intersection and this is not supposed to happen that's why uh, Salome stopped and said okay I'm not gonna mesh this 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 shape here is funny uh, this one mesh cell is funny it's not supposed to be like this but it's like this and it's giving me an error at least you are able to see where this bad mesh is Salome does give you these tools to deal with this sort of things and it was in Snappy Hex Mesh that you know we, we had some funny cells as well, and uh, we were not able to find where the cells were as easily as say Salo. All right, so uh, if we want to see it in the group, you can show pet 003, and we'll see that uh, oops, okay, pet 003 is over here. Okay, let, let's let's try that again show only okay so you see this this bad patch so this this small little cell here is weird and it's going to cause stability problems okay so i press show and look at where it is it's inside one of those pipes as you can see it's inside one of these pipes and uh it's inside inside this uh in fact it's in the center of you know where all the pipes are this little shape here is the problem Okay, so we'll need to do something about it if we are to get rolling and get our UMV files working and the 3D mesh working. So we'll have to think about it. So I'm not going to give you the answer straight away. I'm, I'm like live streaming, so to speak. So I'm figuring it out as I'm recording. So that's, I mean, that's what normally you'll go through, right? I mean, when you actually make a, make a real mesh, you will be going through this troubleshooting process a lot so that this is the real world okay so inside inside this this shape here is where you will find your bad mesh so what can you do uh, to remedy this problem okay so we'll need to play around with some mesh parameters okay uh, so let's recreate our mesh and see whether changing the average cell size makes every any difference or changing the meshing, meshing uh, parameters makes any difference. So I'll need to make again a tetrahedral mesh from this pad. Okay, and I will want to use this netgen again, or I can use other solvers. So I I'm able to say okay I I want to 
uh, create lots of these different meshes this uh, net gens or whatever it is okay I can select from any of these default hypotheses but uh, let's see let's uh, see what we can play with all right okay we have uh, we have this net gen 3d okay uh, I can play with the maximum size and minimum size of the cell all right so let's make the maximum size maybe 20 uh, minimum size 10 I'm just playing around these are the these are the controls I can try can try to do okay uh, I'm not going to play with any other things let's see what changing this max and minimum size does let's see uh, we'll call this max min change all right uh, one okay then we'll experiment around to see what happens and we'll press apply we'll click, click close and let's try computing Okay, so uh, it will still give us this error and let's see whether we can uh, put this back mesh to a group okay and let's uh, show only show only and we'll have this shape here and let's see where this shape is uh, in the bigger scheme of things so I'm going to zoom out until it becomes uh, very very small and I'm going to press show this uh, show this thing and again you will find it somewhere in the center pipe okay looks like looks like this center pipe is somehow very problematic okay this center pipe is very problematic and you can see uh, free uh, not, not free cat Salome is only showing the parts It's actually showing a cross-section a clip view so to speak if you will of this so you can see okay again I'm going to hide uh, I'm gonna hide this and I'm going to show uh, show this uh, element okay find no, no, I'm not gonna find the element I'm gonna show only all right so you can see again these triangles are not intersecting right there is some problem because perhaps the the shape is very bad and the and the, the shape is complicated so we'll need to play around with some parameters and you realize that playing around with these parameters in Salome is much easier than Snappy X Mesh and Block Mesh. So you'll need to try different things. Apparently, this, okay, when the shapes are bigger, it doesn't seem to do make so much of a difference. Okay, so we'll need to try something new. Okay, so let's uh, let's okay. I'm gonna zoom out. I'm gonna show you where this this little uh, problem patch is. Okay, uh, I'm gonna show. And you can see that this this problem met this problem is actually in the middle pipe. It looks like this middle pipe is always the problem, and it seems to be this last mesh that's always problematic. Okay, so let's play with some other parameters. Uh, maybe make the the minimum size a little bigger and see what happens. Okay. So I might not solve everything by this video, but hopefully by the next video, I'll show you what resolution I've come to. And I think in your pipe, in a simple pipe case, it's not uh, it's not going to uh, be too much of an issue, but this shape is complicated. So maybe that's why uh, you have this kind of problem. So let's try using another set. Okay, we'll use a tetrahedral mesh. Okay, oops. Let's uh let's do the max min change one and I'll I will change this uh, parameters. Okay, max min change two. And let's do 20, 0 .0, uh, 0 0.1. Okay, or let's do a fineness change. Okay, we will play with the settings. Alright. And then all right, you'll play, play the settings. I'll do a fine mesh. And uh, local size, I'm not going to bother. All of this, uh, we can play with around with these points later. Okay. And let's apply. Let's see whether this works. Compute. And let's see whether this uh, mesh computes well so I'm going to fast forward this uh, this part and it's going to make a very fine mesh it's 
So 1%, 8%. Okay, I'll fast forward this, alright? And hello, welcome back. So yes, we fast forward the process. And uh, basically, it says no automatic update of the presentation has been done. New mesh size, 6 point, like five million elements, exceeds the current size of the automatic update, which is about 500,000 elements. So basically, it's saying there are too many mesh points. So uh, I'm going to close this. And well, <clears throat> at, least, at least it does show that the mesh works. However, this mesh is tiny, tiny, tiny. OK. Uh, and of course, while this was running, I actually did a search. It looks like some other people have gone through this same uh, problem. Uh, they're having this uh, ng exception and volume meshing stop meshing since boundary select boundary mesh is overlapping okay so uh, it seems that uh, it's a common problem especially when you have complex shapes so this is something uh, probably I won't be solving it this video I'll probably you know try and figure things out once I get uh, once I get the solution I'll come back and present it in the next video but uh, at least it does show that uh, you know this this uh, UNV file seems to be okay, and it's going to be huge because it's a few giga uh, about six million points. Six million points. It's uh, it's uh, how do I put this? Six million points is at least uh, six gigabytes of data. Uh, that's a good rule of thumb. One million points for. Uh, one gigabyte so that's that's how big this thing is uh, probably you don't really want to to do this uh, this in open foam okay because there's just too too small a mesh too many mesh points but uh, yeah at least this video it shows you uh, some of these uh, mesh parameters you can play around with and that will be under you no know, create mesh okay it's exporting but anyway it, it's under create mesh and uh, you can play with the export uh, parameters I mean the, the mesh creation parameters you want to have it in uh, tetrahedrals or what other shapes you have you can use other mesh tools uh, those are all there for you to try and experiment with now once you're done uh, with your 3d mesh Use your ideas to UMV foam in 3D. You can't do it in 2D. You do it in 3D, and then uh, just export it to open foam, and basically you have your poly mesh file. Okay, so hopefully uh, I can get this uh, thing solved uh, in time. If not, there'll be no videos for a very long while. Uh, uh, but uh, that this is the reality of uh, meshing work in the real world, if you have, especially if you have complicated shapes. So. There's something to live with uh, and uh, work around. So I'm going to stop in this video. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys again. Uh, hopefully, I'll have a solution for you. Uh, and I'll see you there. If the thing works. <laughs> okay, bye-bye.